There is one man during 2019 that I've not talked about really at all on this channel that deserves a lot of credit. A man who has been the standout performer from the midfield pack. And that man of course is Carlos Sainz. But some of you may be asking, who is Carlos Sainz? Especially if you watch the races like I do because we never see him. Apologies, that was the uh, wrong clip. This is probably quite evident. Get in there, Lewis. Well, Carlos Sainz is the son of a rally legend, Carlos Sainz Sr. Used to be part of the Red Bull Driver Academy. He drove for Toro Rosso and Renault in the past. And he replaced good friend and ex-McLaren refugee Fernando Alonso at McLaren alongside Lando Norris. And in case you didn't know, he's also a... But what exactly has it been about him in 2019 that has had Carlos Sainz talked about as one of the best drivers of 2019? Well, in today's video, I'm going to illustrate why. But before we get into his first year at McLaren in 2019, let's get into his career so far in Formula 1 and how he really built up to this year. So in 2015, 2016 and most of 2017, Carlos Sainz drove for basically the Red Bull youth team in Toro Rosso. And had teammates along the way such as Max Verstappen, Daniel Kvyat and Pierre Gasly. And during these first few years, Carlos Sainz was already showing the talent that he clearly had. And the promise that he had as well. In 2015 and the first four races of 2016, he was teammates of Max Verstappen, who we know right now is one of the best drivers in Formula 1. And even though Max Verstappen was definitely the better driver, Carlos Sainz still was impressive. And to be honest, if Max was not his teammate in that first season at Toro Rosso, I think people would have rated Carlos a lot higher based on the first year he had. Because it was actually a lot better than people give him credit for. Was it amazing? No, of course it wasn't. Definitely not as good as Max Verstappen's first year, but it was still good. And was at the very least a solid debut season. And there are a couple race weekends in 2015 that for me illustrate how good of a first season it was. The first example is the 2015 Spanish Grand Prix, his first ever home Grand Prix in Formula 1, where in qualifying, out-qualified Max Verstappen and qualified in 5th place. A massively impressive result, and then in the race he finished in P9 and again, he beat Max Verstappen. And the reason the Toro Rossos dropped off so much in the race is because they set their car up for that Grand Prix weekend to have a lot of drag. Meaning cars like the Lotus, Williams and Ferrari passed them very easily in a straight line. But still, a great weekend that was for Carlos Sainz. And another one was the 2015 US Grand Prix that was very rain affected as we know. And for the race, Carlos Sainz was actually starting from the very back. But by the end of the Grand Prix, a Grand Prix that was mental and brilliant, he finished in P7. And was only a few seconds away from finishing in the top 5. Now, if Max Verstappen had not been his teammate during that season for those performances, again, I think he would have got a lot more credit. And I still think his debut season deserves more credit. Then into 2016, after Max Verstappen got promoted to Red Bull, Daniel Kvyat then became his teammate for the rest of 2016. And Carlos Sainz, most of the time, absolutely destroyed Daniel. Which wasn't really a surprise, as we kind of knew he was better anyway. But I think during the 2016 Formula 1 season, we saw definitely a big step up from Sainz. As when his car was competitive enough, Carlos Sainz was almost all the time fighting away for points. In a car that during that season, as we know, fell away because of the year-old Ferrari power unit. But still, Carlos Sainz was able to get some brilliant results in the top 6 or 7 of the grid. Not only in the race, but also in qualifying. And there is one race from the 2016 season that for Carlos Sainz for me really stands out and it is the US Grand Prix from that year. Where firstly in qualifying he put it in P10 despite the Toro Rosso at the time being quite underdeveloped and again they had a year old Ferrari power unit. And then in the race he finished in P6 and he was so close to finishing a P5 before Fernando Alonso overtook him late on in that Grand Prix. Again, a very, very impressive performance despite the lack of development on the car and on the power unit. And those impressive performances just continued into 2017 with Toro Rosso as Daniel Kvyat again was his teammate. And for the first half of the season when the Toro Rosso car was performing well, Carlos Sainz was regularly in the top 10. 
And a certain manufacturer saw this and decided to sign him for the end of 2017 and for 2018 on a loan deal. That manufacturer slash works team was of course Renault. And at the end of 2017 was impressive as in his first race for the Renault works team finished in a very impressive P7. Despite having no testing before that weekend. And then he finished off the season with a couple more points finishes for the Renault Works team. And then went into 2018 with a lot of hype surrounding him. Because 2018 at the time was seen as Carlos Sainz's big chance to really show himself against a very good midfield driver in Nico Hülkenberg. And if Carlos Sainz was able to beat Hülkenberg convincingly in 2018. Then surely Carlos Sainz would be leading the Renault Works team going forward. But that never really in the first half of the season materialised. Because in the first half of the season, despite the odd race where Carlos Sainz did finish ahead, Nico Hülkenberg was the man for Renault who was getting the big and important points finishes that led eventually to Renault finishing P4 in the Constructors. And because Renault were on to signing Daniel Ricciardo for 2019, another star driver, and because Carlos Sainz had not really performed enough in the first half of the season, Carlos Sainz really had to go. Which was a bit of a shame for Carlos because in the second half of 2018, he did improve compared to Hülkenberg, but he had his time. And around this time, his F1 future was also not looking as great as it was a couple years before. As with Red Bull signing Pierre Gasly for 2019 as Max Verstappen's teammate, Carlos Sainz had missed out on being at the Red Bull team. Something he of course aimed for ever since he joined Toro Rosso in 2015 and the Red Bull Driver Academy before that. But he did get a lifeline as Fernando Alonso announced he was leaving McLaren and Formula 1 at the end of 2018. And the man of course to replace him was fellow Spaniard Carlos Sainz. As now Sainz was looking to rebuild the future of his career in Formula 1 at McLaren. But would he be able to? Would he be able to respond to 2018? There was a year that was underwhelming. Could he fend off young rookie teammate Lando Norris? And would he be able to be a part of McLaren finally overturning their misfortune? Well, of course, now we know the answers to that. And it is yes. As in 2019, Carlos Sainz had his first proper breakout year in Formula 1. As by the end of the 2019 Formula 1 season, he finished in P6 in the Drivers' Championship. And even during the course of 2019, had a podium as well. And over the course of 2019, he was definitely one of the most impressive drivers in the field. The first seven races were not too great for Sainz compared to what he was like after then. Mostly because the McLaren car was not quite there yet how it was again later on in 2019 but was still able to get some good points finishes in Baku, Spain and Monaco. And then once McLaren turned up to the French Grand Prix with clearly the fastest car in the midfield, this is where Carlos Sainz's season completely transformed, as he was 80-90% to 90 of the time consistently the fastest driver in the midfield. The McLaren car definitely did help in the second half of the season, but Carlos had to get the pace out of it that he did. And had to also contend with his very fast rookie teammate, Lando Norris. Who was, compared to Sainz at least in qualifying, very very quick. Compared to Lando Norris though, when it came to the races, when it really mattered most when it came to scoring points, Carlos Sainz produced on almost every occasion. Which is why he beat Lando Norris so comfortably in the Drivers' Championship. But instead of me going through every single race of Carlos Sainz's 2019 and looking at how great it's been. What I'm going to do instead is look at his top 5 races of 2019 because I think his top 5 races of the 2019 season will speak for itself and showcase how great Carlos has been for McLaren. By the way, these top 5 races I'm not putting in a certain order, they're just the best 5 races that I think Carlos had in 2019. The first one though is the Monaco Grand Prix where Carlos Sainz did very well to first off get into the top 10 in qualifying as McLaren were not really that quick around Monte Carlo as Lando Norris proved in qualifying and the race as well. And I definitely don't believe McLaren had the best midfield car. I think the best midfield car in Monaco that weekend was probably the Toro Rosso. 
But despite that, Carlos was able to put his car right in there with the Toro Rossos and at the start of the race performed one of the best overtakes of 2019 by going right around the outside at Casino Square right to the top of the hill. To pull off this move at the start of a race when grip is quite low and to have the confidence to do this is incredible. And when it came to the midfield battle in the Grand Prix, that move won him that battle. Because of course, track position Monaco is so, so important. But that weekend, Carlos Sainz, I think, outperformed his car by quite a lot and did very well to score those eight important points for McLaren. Another one is the race in Austria, where Carlos Sainz started from near the back of the grid and knew that if he was going to finish in the points, it was going to take... A monumental effort to get even near that but a monumental effort is exactly what he gave and it was a brilliant drive from Carlos Sainz to come up to P8 and the reason he finished in P8 was because his first into the Grand Prix was very very impressive and he was very quick on the harder compound tyre he was on and then once he pitted for the final stint of the Grand Prix past Perez, Giovinazzi and Raikkonen to get his way right up into the points and to score yet more vital points for McLaren in the constructors. And as I'll get on to later with his race in Brazil, it's quite common actually for Carlos Sainz when he starts at the back or near the back to have a great race. And I think the reason that is is because he's such a great racer and is able to fight his way through a field much better than other drivers are. The next one on my list is the Hungarian Grand Prix where after qualifying things were looking pretty good. He was outqualified by teammate Norris, which definitely would have been a disappointment, but was in P8 for McLaren, which is what they wanted. Then at the start, after Pierre Gasly had a poor start, Carlos Sainz not only passed Gasly, but also teammate Norris and got up into 6th place. Then after Valtteri Bottas pitted with front wing damage after contact with Charles Leclerc, he was up to P5. And went on to maintain that for the rest of the Grand Prix in a very close battle between him, his teammate Kimi Raikkonen and later on Valtteri Bottas. And also the Red Bull of Pierre Gasly as well. The most impressive thing though for me from the Hungarian Grand Prix race was not his position he finished in but his pace. Because he was able to comfortably finish ahead of Pierre Gasly who was as we know not performing quite up to spec in the Red Bull. And then was able as well to cap it off with the P5 and he thoroughly deserved the P5 for his extraordinary pace. And another race that was very similar to Hungary also for me goes down as one of his best five races of 2019 and that is his race at Suzuka. For of course the 2019 Japanese Grand Prix. Where in a very similar way to Hungary got a good start from P7 on the grid. Got past a couple cars after 5 laps or so after the chaos of the first lap. And then after that at certain points in the Grand Prix was in P4. And even though Alex Albon in the Red Bull did beat him to P4. Carlos Sainz was not that slow. And was able for plenty of times in the Grand Prix to match Albon on pace. And actually be faster than Charles Leclerc. Who as we know was recovering through the field at that point. And again, like Hungary, the most impressive thing is not the position, but it really is the pace. As really in that car, he had no right to be that quick compared to Albon or Leclerc. But to complete his best five races of 2019, you have to complete it, of course, with his podium finish in Brazil. Where after qualifying, he had an engine problem and had to start the race from the very back. And considering the McLaren pace in qualifying of Lando Norris, a points finish was not looking that good at all. But despite that, Carlos Sainz came from the back and marched his way through the field. To the point that before the first safety car came out, Carlos Sainz was in a good position for maybe a point or two. But then the safety cars played into his hands as he could pit again for a fresh and softer set of tyres. And then he went on the attack to get as many points as he could. And eventually after all the chaos of the two Ferraris crashing out, Albon being spun out by Hamilton and then Lewis Hamilton getting a penalty, Carlos Sainz ended up on the road finishing in P4. But again because of Hamilton's penalty got his first ever podium in Formula 1 and McLaren's first podium in five and a half years. Now I don't think this was his absolute best drive of 2019 but considering the year he had with McLaren and how impressive he was, I think he did deserve one podium in 2019 at least, considering Toro Rosso had two. And the race in Brazil also showcased another skill that Carlos Sainz has really shown during 2019 that 
when there has been certain situations when chaos has been going on, most of the time, if not all of the time, Carlos Sainz has been able to rise up and get a position that maybe he didn't really deserve and get vital points for McLaren in the Constructors Championship. Now, I know a couple of you will be asking, why isn't Hockenheim on this list? Well, his driver Hockenheim was good, but because he made that critical mistake during the race and his pace wasn't as impressive for me as those other races, it just isn't quite in there as the top five for me best races of his 2019, but it is still a good one. But why exactly has Carlos Sainz been so good in 2019? What are the factors behind his success in 2019? Well, the first big factor behind Carlos Sainz's success in 2019 has to be the car. Yes, Carlos Sainz in 2019 has been very good and at times has outperformed his car, but the car, we have to admit, has helped him quite a lot. As I said before, in the first seven or eight races, it wasn't particularly great. It wasn't terrible and was definitely better than the 2018 McLaren, but it wasn't as good as it became. But then from the French Grand Prix on, he had a car that was comfortably the best car in the midfield. And there are hardly any races for the remainder of 2019 after the race at Paul Ricard where McLaren didn't have the best midfield car. And the reason the McLaren car in 2019 was so good was because it was so comfortable to drive. And it was so easy to push the car to its limits, especially in qualifying. Which is why in qualifying McLaren have been so good. But because of how good the car has been, it's allowed Carlos Sainz to really flourish. Because it's not a car that's trying to get away from him. It's not a car that is presenting him things that he doesn't expect. And it's not a car that he has to massively outdrive to get a great result like he had to with the Toro Rosso or even the Renault. It was doing exactly what Carlos Sainz wanted. And that is why Carlos Sainz was helped quite a lot by his car. And once he and the McLaren car became one for the second half of 2019, there was no real stopping Carlos Sainz. Another factor, though, that has helped quite a lot is the working environment at McLaren. That is quite a bit different to the one that it was with Fernando Alonso as their team leader right before Carlos joined McLaren. Because before 2019, McLaren were seen as, and they pretty much were, a very serious racing team, even if they weren't winning and put a lot of pressure on themselves to succeed, even though their chances of succeeding were never really good. But with Fernando Alonso and the bad blood that came with him at McLaren gone at the end of 2018, and with Carlos and Lando now at McLaren for 2019, McLaren were able to set a new working environment and set a new tone within the team. A tone of being a lot more happy and having much more fun. Yes, in 2019, McLaren were very good, but still McLaren are not right where they want to be. But instead of what they did in the past, being very depressed about it, they decided to have fun. Which I think, as you could see, for Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris in McLaren was the right tone to set for the team. As it allowed everyone to get on with one another and everyone to perform to spec. Creating a very fun atmosphere at McLaren. And the same really can't be said for Carlos's previous teams. At Toro Rosso, they were kind of a fun team, but not as much as McLaren. And there was a bit more seriousness to Toro Rosso in their tone than I think with McLaren. But I think the reason Carlos failed at Renault the season before he came to McLaren was because Renault, during 2018, because it's a works team and they expect to climb the grid, put a lot of pressure on themselves to climb the grid which obviously created a high-pressure environment that Carlos Sainz simply couldn't work in. And I believe because of that, that's why Carlos Sainz really did fail at Renault compared to how he's done at McLaren. And maybe if Renault during 2018 set a tone for the team of being quite relaxed like they were in the past, around 2005, then maybe Carlos Sainz would have performed better in that atmosphere. But because Renault are again in a high-pressurised environment, Carlos Sainz couldn't really succeed. And as long as going forward, McLaren continue with this tone within the team and continue with a car that is this good to drive, then that will allow the drivers of Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris to get the best out of themselves. But talking about the future, what is probably going to be the future for Carlos Sainz after this breakout season? Well, in 2020, because the regulations are basically the same, what he has to do really is replicate 2019. 
to prove to everyone that he can do what he did in 2019 on a consistent basis. And then as long as McLaren going into the new era of Formula 1 in 2021 and beyond make progress on their car and as a team make progress and Carlos Sainz, as long as Carlos stays at the level he currently is at, then maybe Carlos Sainz can win McLaren's first Grand Prix since Jensen Button in 2012. But that is quite a long way away. And to be honest, realistically, they're going to be waiting until 2022 at the earliest, I think, for a race victory. But if this is the start of something special for Carlos Sainz, then watch him very closely in the next two or three years. Because we may be watching a driver who could go on to be the next Spanish world champion. But guys, let me know in the comments section down below, what do you think of Carlos Sainz's great 2019? And what are the causes for him being so good? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And hit the like button as well for more content like this. And also, check out a collaboration I did with F1 Fanatics and many other F1 YouTubers where I did a Christmas quiz on the F1 Fanatics channel. The link to the first part of that quiz is down below in the description. Don't forget as well to hit F1 Fanatics with a like. And also, subscribe to them as well. They're a great group of lads. But until my next video, guys, which will be a live stream, the last live podcast of 2019, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.